Hello. Well, today is my uh, 200th episode of this series. And um, I would like to talk about, uh, or at least just list off uh, my favorite films from each year of the 2010s. Uh, some of these I've talked about before. Actually, um, many of these I have at one point or another talked about, but there are a couple I know I have never really talked about much at all. At most, it might be when just talking about a, a particular actor or an actress. Um, that aside, uh, some of these I have never talked about. And I might actually talk about that at some point. Um, uh, I don't know when that would be, but uh, I, I would like to talk about some of these for sure uh, in the future. Um, so without further ado, I will just go down the years um, uh, and just show what my favorite film is and give just a, I guess, a very brief reason as to why I enjoy said film. Um, now, of course, all of this is my opinion. Uh, that should be obvious. Um, not that you have to say this is your favorite film of this particular year or uh, should be in your top five or ten even. Some of these people may not enjoy, or maybe they do enjoy, but they don't, or at least like, but they don't enjoy them as much as others, I guess I should say. Um, just want to let the people, just let you know that uh, it seems like it would be quite obvious this is all my opinion, but sometimes I know, uh, I've seen similar lists, uh, of, not necessarily of this decade uh, per se, but they ha have lists of films that they love and enjoy. Um, uh, and that's their opinion, but sometimes in comments, uh, anywhere, like in, on any comment section on YouTube, or if they share it elsewhere, like sometimes, sometimes on Facebook or Twitter, uh, sh a video is shared anywhere on social media. That's how people get, uh, they see it. And from there, they just uh, sort of, uh, uh, people comment and sometimes uh, write how they thought, like, the one's opinion was better than their own of a certain year or anything. And not that, that they were being, or saying that or implying that in any way in the video, but sometimes... That's just how it can be taken. Uh, I know this is uh, probably an unnecessary thing to even say, but just in case, I just want to let all that, uh, just say all of that at the very beginning, because uh, uh, perhaps by the end of the video, like, or at least of the last portion, uh, some people might be like, well, that was fine, that's done. So, without further ado, I will begin, and my favorite film of 2010 uh, is Inception. Um, I really enjoy this film. This is an, an incredibly original film, um, uh, made by Christopher Nolan. You know, he's one of my favorite filmmakers. Um, I would say he's my favorite filmmaker currently working today. Um, I know there's a lot of them out there that are incredible, Scorsese, Tarantino, uh, David Fincher, um, Steven Spielberg, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, he's still making stuff, but mostly stuff for himself. Um, I love George Lucas, but he's, any of the stuff he's making, we will never see. Uh, unless you're a friend of his or a family member. Um, but Christopher Nolan, you know, with this film, he, he, you know, at this point, you know, Batman Begins, Dark Knight, also The Prestige, and Memento, um, also Following, and uh, Insomnia are also incredible. You know, prestige, 
also uh, is a film that doesn't get as there's some of those are some of his films that don't get as much attention uh, compared to his others you know, like his Batman films and Inception is a really interesting film it's a really original uh, a heist film where go into people's dreams uh, steal information that's valuable that can be used to get money um, uh, be able to uh, plant uh, seeds into people's minds to sort of when they wake up they kind of might have like sort of an epiphany of sorts and then from there you know, it could change the way they do various things that we see. and then when we see that in this film uh, so if you have never seen this film uh, you know I know I'm being a bit vague but uh, regarding that though this is a film that I'm sure many people have seen but on off chance people haven't I don't want to really spoil it so Inception uh, it's my favorite of 2010 fantastic film uh, I also enjoy The Fighter uh, with Christian Bale and Mark Wahlberg and Amy that's also a, another film which I have up here. Uh, I might talk about that one day. Um, but I love Inception, the best of 2010. I think that's that that will that's just definitely a favorite of mine. And in 2011, my favorite film is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Um, now I've heard people who have seen the uh, British uh, miniseries with Alec Guinness say this they don't enjoy this compared to that one uh, though people say oh you know the acting is phenomenal in this film just as it was in the British um, I did see the British around the time this came out because I believe they replayed it um, and I have talked about this at certain points before but I don't believe I've really dedicated a whole video to it. I've never really made uh, just one solely on this film. It's a, it's a slow film. It's a slow sort of burn in that uh, you know, many things happen, but it gradually sort of builds up into, like, who, who's this spy? Uh, the spy in the British intelligence, and Gary Ullman truly sells the film. You know, he is the lead. He commands the screen every time he's there. Um, we also have Colin Firth, Tom Hardy, John Hurt, Toby Jones, Mark Strong, Benedict Cumberbatch. Incredible cast all around. Uh, like he says, nominated for three Academy Awards. Uh, didn't win any. I'm sure at this point you know Gary Oldman is my favorite actor of all time. I would have loved if he received uh, an Academy Award for this film. He was, I believe, he was really deserving of it. Um, but he eventually got one. You know, uh, might touch on that in a bit. Uh, but you know, just an incredible film, I believe. Um, I enjoyed the miniseries um, when I saw it. I thought it was good. Um, but I don't know. I just always... I I, I just enjoy this film. Uh, I have the book also. Might have to read... Or I might have to buy the DVD of the miniseries. Because I saw Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Uh, you know, the miniseries on TV about the time this came out, so, yeah, and Alec Guinness is incredible, but so is Gary Oldman, uh, a biased part of me would say he's better, but then again, he's my favorite actor, but I do love Alec Guinness, so I would, I, uh, in terms of comparing, uh, I don't know if I want to do that at this moment, um, also I'd have to reread the book, um, this is like a two-hour film, two hours and eight minutes, it says. 
so in a way, it's it'd be a bit shorter and things would be left out of the book. Though the book isn't particularly overtly thick, uh, but it's a decent sized book. Um, but anyway, uh, I enjoy this film. I know some people, it's not their cup of tea. That's all right. Um, but I just enjoy it. I, I've always, I, I just sort of fell in love with this movie ever since I saw it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those movies you just enjoy. Uh, or sometimes you enjoy. Um, so I think, in a way, words can't do justice to this film. And I would say that for many, if not all of these films, honestly. Um, sometimes all that has been said... You know, you can't add more to it. Um, though, granted, uh, I think with this, the film, I think, speaks for itself in a lot of ways. Um, so that was 2011. Uh, in 2012, my favorite film is The Dark Knight Rises. I've made various videos on this, saying why I love this film. I even went through it. I made a video how uh, discussing some of the big plot holes people often uh, cite this film having and go, going in depth as to why many of them are not plot holes but have I and they're able to be explained um, quite easily uh, mainly through other the other installments in this trilogy um, uh, really this film doesn't have any plot holes, honestly. Um, if there is a plot hole, um, it's so small that uh, on the fly, I can't think of. Um, uh, there could be a plot hole in the other two installments of this trilogy, um, really. But yeah, I just love this film. I think it's an incredible movie. Christopher Nolan uh, closed out the trilogy incredibly well. Um, I remember going to the theater um, with friends deciding I, what happens happens. I'm not going to have a, a forethought uh, going in of how I would like the film to end because you know that, that, that could be bad because I'm I'm thinking you know he could live Batman could Bruce Wayne could live or he could die. And I just didn't want to, you know, I, I didn't want to have a sort of thought of either scenario, preferring one over the other, because uh, if it doesn't end how I think or how I would like it to end, I could be very disappointed. Even if the overall film was, I thought was incredible and great, the ending could be a disappointment. Uh, especially since this is the end of a trilogy, if the ending is a disappointment, in a way, that can affect the overall experience uh, when you look back at it. You know, up until the very end, you know, it's incredible, but then at the end, it's just, yeah, it kind of stinks. I don't believe that uh, occurred uh, for me. You know, because I loved it after I saw it, and I have continued to love it even more with each viewing. Um, I know this isn't always the favorite of the trilogy. That is completely fine. Um, you know, there was a four-year wait, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, The Dark Knight was a huge film. Following up The Dark Knight was no easy task. Nolan wanted to only make it if a third installment if he had a story. He, his brother, and David Goyer uh, created a story that uh, he got into, and then he just made another uh, incredible film experience, a masterpiece in a way, if, uh, if I'm able to call it that. Uh, I think it's a masterpiece. Some might not see it as such, but uh, I love it. I enjoy it. I always enjoy watching this film. Um, okay.
So, my favorite film of 2013 is American Hustle. I am very confident I have never talked about this at all. At most, I might have mentioned it a time or two when talking about like some of the uh, actors and actresses in this film, like Christian Bale. I f this is a, f a h very funny film. Uh, I just enjoy it, the whole ab scam uh, thing and how they're able to make a fictional film inspired by this true event as well as pulling inspiration from real people into this. It's just it's just a hilarious film, you know. Christian Bale and Amy Adams being con artists and getting wrapped up with the FBI and having to uh, do deals and stuff against their will and having politicians take money, you know, as bribes and then being recorded and everything. That's just, everything that happens is just hilarious. Um, this film, as it says, got nominated for 10 Academy Awards. It lost all of them. It didn't win a single one, which I think is a real shame. I think the acting should have at least received some love. Uh, but, you know, uh, Christian Bale won for The Fighter. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence won for uh, Silver Linings Playbook. And Bradley Cooper was nominated for this film and uh, Silver Linings Playbook. And this was uh, Amy Adams. Uh, Fifth nomination, yeah. Yeah, this was her fifth nomination. The first for Best Actress. Uh, she's nominated for Supporting Actress for Junebug, Doubt, The Fighter, and The Master. She's never won an Oscar. Um, neither has Bradley Cooper. He's been nominated for like a. Yeah, like a seven Oscars now. Silver Linings, then this, and then two for American Sniper, and then, so that's four, and then three for Best Picture, Actor, and uh, Adapted Screenplay for uh, uh, Star is Born, so he's getting up there with nominations, um, I have a feeling that he and Amy Adams will win Oscars at one point, um, would have been great and cool if they did, along with Jennifer Lawrence and Christian Bale. Um, this is a film that uh, I noticed after it came out, people were like, it wasn't all that great. Like, the hype wasn't... It didn't live up to the hype, essentially. I enjoy this film. I loved it. I believe it did live up to the hype. Um, but that could be just my personal taste also of that, uh, of 2013. Um, I believe the hype, it, it lived up to the hype for me. Um, so, yeah, um, 2014, Interstellar, uh, you know, Matthew McConaughey, or the group of other astro astronauts, including Anne Hathaway, go to try and save their, uh, planet find a new planet to colonize, and, uh, you know, because uh, it seems like Earth is going to perish, going to die, while uh, Jessica Chastain plays uh, McConaughey's daughter. Uh, he, you know, you know, she uh, becomes a, a scientist, and uh, his son, Casey Affleck becomes a farmer, um, and they're just, you know, and she's dealing with trying to figure out what can be done to help the planet. Uh, yeah, it's just, this is a very good film. Uh, I enjoy it, and I think this film gets more love with each passing year.
which I'm happy about. I'm happy this film has gotten a lot more love over the years. Um, it's really fantastic. Um, and a great experience, too. Uh, especially if you saw this on the big screen. Uh, I, I think it really benefited from that. Uh, and it's just an incredible film. Uh, yeah. 2015. Big short. Uh, now this is about the financial crisis of 2007-8. <clears throat> And it's quite humorous uh, for a film about a serious subject. It's a very humorous film. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what all to say here. Uh, but, you know, the cast is incredible. You know, Christian Bale, Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, Brad Pitt. I don't know, they all play they all play their parts right and it's just an interesting story of how all these people in very specific uh areas uh you know, they see this is gonna happen or they find out about it and how they prepare for it and how many people are not prepared and they just sort of like, you know uh, things suffer. People suffer from the collapse, unfortunately, the uh, economic collapse of the 07 and 08. It was a very unfortunate time, obviously. Uh, yeah, it's it's an entertaining film, though. It's a very funny, and uh, I was surprised by uh, just how funny this film could be. Uh, so, yeah. Big short. Um, 2016, Manchester by the Sea is my favorite film uh, of that year. Incredible story of how it's very quite realistic regarding um, how uh, uh, dealing with loss and uh, the, the, the acting. Just the story and everything is just incredible. I've made videos about this before. You can find those in a playlist quite easily. Uh, I have uh, for this series. And I believe this film really came out at the right time for me. It's just a lot of things happened uh, before I saw this film and after I saw it. Um, this is just a great film. It's a very sad film I've talked about before. It's quite sad. But I think it is a film that at, one, at least is worth one watch. It's worth a watch at least once. Um, I still watch it uh, periodically to this day, but I don't watch it a whole lot compared to some of these other films. Um, because of... Uh, uh, just how sad it gets at times, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's just a good film, you know. 2017, my favorite film that year is Dunkirk. I know Dunkirk for many. Um, uh, it's not uh, as beloved uh, as some of the other films of 2017 or of Nolan. I enjoy this. I thought it was a different approach to the war genre. How he, no one focuses on the survival aspect of it instead of just all out war. I know the criticisms of people uh, not being fond of the lack of story, or not story, of uh, characters, character development. Um, I personally think that's a strength of the film because uh, regarding the situation of Dunkirk um, I don't know with being bombarded by planes and being shot at on a uh, on a pretty much constant basis or if you're not being 
bombarded by any of that, you know, you're on your guard and trying to get off that beach. I can imagine people wouldn't be talking too much about much anything else, so outside of I want to get home. You know, I just want to get home. People might not talk too much about themselves. Um, and I thought that was interesting. Um, you don't really get that too much in war films. Um, so I thought that was a nice and interesting, cool little uh, departure uh, that no one took regarding this film and the genre that it's in. Even though, again, he sees this as a survival film because it takes place in World War II, it will obviously be seen as a war film. So... Yeah, I, I really like this film. I enjoy it. I've talked about this before. Not much else to say. Um, so, uh, 2018. Uh, a Quiet Place. Uh, I really enjoy this film. Uh, I love this film. I think uh, it is a fantastic movie. Some think this was a bit overrated. And while it was good, just not live. It didn't live up to the hype. Um, again, I just I don't know. I just enjoyed this film. I just loved it. It was uh, a very interesting. Uh, just a very interesting, you know, um, story. Living in a world where these monsters uh, kill at. Uh, they hear anything uh, particularly loud and uh, yeah the opening is very unsettling it's on it's just yeah it's it's just a very good film uh, just leave it at that and uh, and uh, my favorite film of 2019 last year the lighthouse I talked about this before right after I saw the film and all of the sentiments I've said in that video I still think and I love this even more you know the Oscars essentially shut this film out entirely it didn't get nominated for best picture director screenplay uh, actor supporting actor got nominated for uh, cinematography which is good um, but yeah it's unfortunately just didn't get recognized uh, much outside of that uh, it's really the biggest award it got recognized for though Defoe got nominated for a Critics Choice Award but uh, other than that not much love award wise but I have a feeling this might this will probably be seen as a very beloved film later on um, I, it just yeah, I just have that feeling about this movie um, and it's interesting how 2018 and 2019 back to back my favorite films are horror films because this is a horror film but it's more in a way psychological instead of straightforward slasher or any sort of uh, jump scares um, so yeah that's uh those are my film favorite films of the decade uh, yeah fine just be like that you too just follow um, I haven't talked much about American Hustle or uh, the big short I don't think I talked too much about Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy before. I know I'll mention it. Uh, if I did talk about it, that's probably so long ago. I just, well, it's. I know I've mentioned many of these films at least once. Uh, if I've not done full videos on them, um, but hopefully for those I have not made videos on, like American Hustle and The Big Short. Hopefully I'll, uh, you know, rewatch them and uh, 
just uh, be able to and enjoy. Enjoy viewing them again, and then talk at, uh, talk about them uh, to you. Uh, perhaps you've seen uh, many of these movies. Perhaps you've seen all of these movies. Um, what are your f favorite films of the last decade? Like uh, each year, like uh, have you ever uh, made a list and determined what your favorite film is of that uh, uh, a particular year? Would any of these be in the films I've mentioned be in the top 5 or 10 or 20? Um, I don't, I'm not very good at lists, um, but I know I'm able to f figure out what my favorite film of a particular year is. Um, I've done that obviously here and I've given you my 10 for the last decade. Uh, Again, many of these video, many of them I've talked about. Some I haven't. Uh, what are your thoughts on any of these? Uh, do you like any of these movies? Do you dislike any of these movies? Do you love some? Do you hate some? Uh, if you like to give your thoughts, uh, you're welcome to do so. Um, I hope. Regardless, uh, you found this uh, interesting to a degree. Uh, I know it's a bit; it was a bit longer than my videos had been that late of late. Um, again, I am going to be taking a break uh, for the next few weeks. Um, yeah, I am. Uh, so it's February. Got to do the calendar uh, when that happens. Um, anyway, um, I hope you all uh, enjoyed this video. But again, I'm going to be taking a break, so I'll be posting this you know, seven. Uh, probably take a like a, maybe like a two week break or so back the 28th uh, it's a leap year uh, yeah, so yeah I'll be back before the leap year um, and I'm gonna be talking about uh, uh, I'm come back with talking about films that I have uh, been wanting to talk about for a long time uh, I mean I did talk about them overall like in a broad sense but never individually, and I've wanted to, but I'm going to, during this break, watch these films and be able to talk to you about them, or make a video at least, and maybe in the comments we can talk about them. Uh, I don't want to necessarily say what those are, um, but they're classics, they're classic films, uh, well, at least the first two are seen as classic films. I enjoy the third quite a bit. Not as much as the first two. Um, maybe from there you gather what I'm going to be talking about. Um, or maybe not. Maybe you don't know. In any event, uh, I will watch these films and then come back with a video. Uh, and with that said... Uh, I hope you all have a great day, have a great week, great weekend, and great weeks, honestly, because I won't be back next week. So until next time, take care.